All right, guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at systems of force when two or more objects are being acted on, um, and you have to maybe find like the forces in between them. Please keep in mind that I just had a newborn child who you might hear in the background, or on my computer desk is my cat, so you might hear him too. All right, so in this problem, let's say that you have two blocks. Um, the first one we'll call MA. We'll say that has a mass of two kilograms, and then MB. We'll say it has a mass of three kilograms. Um, and you will normally have some external force that looks like it's pushing uh, on the object. It's not pointing away like a free body diagram. It's just sort of like ghosting over here. So let's say that this is a really easy force of 100 newtons. Let's talk about, oh, and there is no friction. We need to say that, no friction. Let's talk about the first thing that you can do with this 100 newtons of force and the two um, masses of the objects. If you want, you can pretend that as these two blocks move, let's say they start from rest and accelerate to the right, um, when they move, they move as one object, which means they'll have the same acceleration. And if you want to find that acceleration, then what you can do is treat it as one large object. So if I wanted to find the acceleration of this whole thing, I would do the net force over the mass. And in this case, the net force for the whole, we call it a system is going to be that 100 newtons of force. If there was like 20 newtons of friction, then you would just take that away and it'd be 80. Then you divide it by the mass, and instead of a mass of um, two or three kilograms, you would do five, which of course is going to give you 20 meters per second squared. Okay, now I can use this acceleration when I write equations of net force for each object individually. So let's do that for um, box A. For box A, I'll draw a free body diagram right here, call it FBDA. You've got the normal force down, which I'll, I'm sorry, the weight down, which I'll call MAG, and the normal force up, which I'll call NA. Um, they're equal, so I'll cancel them out right there with little congruency marks. Um, and when I draw this force, I'm going to draw it to the right. Okay, so that is your 100 newton force F. All right, now you're not done with the free body diagram of just A, because if I'm thinking of just block A, I'm going to be resisted by block B. So I would need to draw a force backwards and label it F A B, and it's a fabulous force. It is the resistance that block A experiences from block B as it is pushing you know, to the right. It feels resisted to the left. Okay, well now let's talk about the fact that for the second block, you would have a weight down, uh, it's a little bit bigger, so we'll make that weight force a little bit bigger. Normal force up, we'll call it NB. Remember those two would be equal to each other, I'll use separate congruent marks for that. Um, but this external force is not what is pushing that second MB block, maybe it's you know your grandma or um, a dog or something that it's pushing against these boxes, creating that external F force. But that doesn't actually touch block B, so instead we have to recognize that this fabulous force is experienced by both block A and block B. That's what makes it so fabulous. Now I'll call this FAB so that I recognize it is the exact same force, even though it's in two different free body diagrams. Um, and now I can find this force a number of different ways. Um, the first would be for me to just look at the free body diagram of B and to say, oh, well, FAB is the net force, right? That is the net force on, you could call it B if you wanted. And so to figure out what the net force on B is, sorry, um, to figure out what that net force is, you would say the acceleration equals net force over mass, and so the net force, mass times acceleration, I guess I didn't need to write that. Anyway, the mass of block B is 3 kilograms, and the acceleration, you already know, <gasps> it's 20 meters a second. So I can write 20 meters per second squared and realize that, oh my god, I've got 60 newtons of force acting on block B. Okay, so this is effectively telling me that block B is experiencing that fabulous force of 60 newtons, which again, we're saying that the net force on B is that fabulous force. Okay, so that's one way to find that 60 newton force. Another way um, would be for us to look at the force that's acting on block A, or the, the forces acting on block A. 
if I'd root write the net forces on block A, I would have F to the right, and I would subtract that AB because it's going to the left. Now if I wanted to find AB, I'd add it to both sides and subtract the net force. Now, in this case, you know that that external force is 100 newtons, but what about that net force that is experienced by block A? Oh, well, if I want to find the net force that's experienced by block A, then I take the mass of block A, which is 2 kilograms, multiply it by that acceleration of 20, and I'm left with 40 newtons. So. When I try to find the fabulous force, I get <gasps> ta-da, 60 newtons. Good stuff. Now, let's move on to a, a problem with three blocks. Okay, so here I want to find the force between M, A, and B. So that means there is a force right here. I could draw it like this, F, A, B, F, A, B. That's the force between A and B. But there's also a force between B and C. F, B, C, F, B, C. And if I want to find what that force is, then all I'm going to need to do is uh, draw free body diagrams for those things. To give ourselves some numbers, let's say that MA is, oh, I don't know, 2 kilograms. MB, let's say is 4. And MC is 1 kilogram. And, oh, here's a fun one. Instead of telling you what the net force, or I'm sorry, not the net force, what that external force F is, we'll leave that unknown. Let's find what the accelerate, or what the net force is, if we know the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's use this information and try and find FAB and FC. So right off the bat, I'm going to recognize, oh, I can treat this whole thing as one object of 2 plus 4 plus 1, or 7 kilograms, and use that mass to try and understand what the external force acting on the whole thing is. Again, we're going to assume that there's no friction on any of this. Okay, so if I take net force equals mass times acceleration, effectively what we're saying here is that that external force is the net force if there's no friction. And the mass that we would use is the total, or 7 kilograms. And our acceleration is 10. Okay, so that external force is 70 newtons. Okay, great. Now let's start working backwards and forwards and figure out what is FAB and what's FBC. So to do that, I'm going to draw free body diagrams for A, B, and C. Again, just label each one of these with a dot. I'm going to do the... Weight forces down, MAG, NA, a little bit bigger, MBG, NB, and a little one, MCG, NC. Okay, now let's talk about where this external force goes. It is only applied to box A, so that F only goes on the free body diagram for A. For the love of God, do not draw it here or here, because that makes no sense. So don't do it. Congratulations. Instead, we should think about how FAB is what is actually pushing block B forward and resisting block A to the left. Then FBC is what pushes block C forward and what resists block B to the left. You're going to be really tested on that idea, and I'm going to ask you to draw free body diagrams for this exact same type of setup um, when you take a test. So if this doesn't make sense to you, just pause the video and think about it. Do you understand why block BC, or the C block, is, is pushed with this force between block B and C? Do you understand how that is a resistive force for block B? How block A, that force AB pushes block B forward, is also a resistant force for A. If not, oh my god, get it. And I'm going to put some congruency marks so I remember FAB is equal and FBC is equal. That's just a terrible arrow. Okay, and now I'm going to do um, some fun, crazy stuff. If I want to think about the net force acting on A, let's remember that we already found... Oh, sorry. Let's remember that we already found... There's my child. 
If you're wondering why this is happening, it's because my cat's paw is pressing the minimize button. Now he's, now he's biting me. Okay. So anyway, um, if I can recall that external force is 70 newtons. We already found that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that note right here. And what I'm going to do now is write a system of equations. That, that's my cat pushing the laptop. He's freaking out. He's really jealous of my newborn child. Um, if I want to figure out what the net force on A is, I know that it's going to be that external force of 70 newtons minus F A B. Now you might be wondering, how do I figure out what the net force on A is? Well, remember you take the mass of A times the acceleration. So the mass of A is 2 kilograms. Multiply that by 10 meters a second squared. And you're going to get 20 newtons. Wow. So to figure out what FAB is, you are going to add it to both sides and then subtract the net force. So that gives you 70 minus 20. Congratulations. The fabulous force is 50 newton force. So you found the force between MA and B. Okay, now I can uh, use that if I wanted to to figure out what FBC is because I could write a uh, net force equation for B, which would look like this. And I can always figure out what the net force on B is. This should be a sigma by taking the mass of B and multiplying it by the acceleration. So 4 kilograms times 10. It's a great meters per second squared. It gives me 40 newtons. So if I want to find FBC, I add it to both sides. Take FB, subtract the net force on FB, and I would get um, 50 newtons minus 40 newtons, which is 10 newtons. So that's the force on BC, or the force between MB and Z. Uh, now, a quicker way to get to that number would actually be to just consider the net force on C because it's just FBC. And so you know FBC is the mass of C times the acceleration, or 1 kilogram times 10 meters per second squared, which is 10 newtons. Yay! Physics is real. All right, say goodbye, Ishmael.